This is the Tower Bridge Lego set. It's huge, but rather than simply building it at home, I'm going to build it at Tower Bridge itself. The set was way bigger than I expected, and features some really nice touches and details perfectly matched to the real thing. And the middle section even opens too. My only criticism, and it's a big one, is why is it beige? The real bridge is unquestionably grey, so I have no clue as to why they went for this colour. Regardless, building it here was a delight. In fact, I enjoyed it so much that I'm now going to build the rest of London, at, on or in the real life locations. From a custom motorised tube train to my dream Lego set. This is the first episode in a brand new Lego travel series, so if you enjoy it, please consider subscribing. Okay, let's build some more landmarks, starting with Trafalgar Square. There was Nelson's Column, these rather minimalistic lions, the fourth plinth, home to a different piece of art every year or two, the fountains, and then somewhere behind this mess of scaffolding, the National Gallery, which even opens at the back to reveal the artwork inside. It was then a short walk to Buckingham Palace, and this set was equally detailed, if a little beige and boring. Plus, I made a Queen's Guard minifigure, which I guess is now the King's Guard. That feels weird to say. Then I built the London postcard set at Piccadilly Circus. Or should I say Brickadilly Circus? You can't even blame me for the terrible pun. It literally says it on the set. Okay, these are getting repetitive. Let's try a challenge for the next one. This is a London Skyline set, and I want to build it inside the London Eye. Now, the eye takes precisely 30 minutes to complete one rotation, meaning building this will be a literal race against the clock. But before I could start, I suddenly felt very aware of something. I look like a giant weirdo. There were at least 20 of us crammed into this tiny pod, and I got at least 19 incredibly strange looks. Still, the race was on, and I think this calls for some dramatic Lego building music. Dramatic Lego building music creating artificial tension building deafening crescendo. I somehow managed to finish in just over 30 minutes, saved by the fact that the eye stopped a couple of times midway. Oh, and Tower Bridge was still beige. Talking of Tower Bridge, let's move on to the pop culture round. I built the fight scene from Spider-Man Far From Home, including Spider-Man using a street sign as a shield, the James Bond Speed Champion set opposite the MI6 building, the Charles Dickens set outside of his London home, the Beatles yellow submarine beside Abbey Road Studios, and the Doctor Who set next to a real-life TARDIS, which predictably vanished. There was also a plethora of Harry Potter sets to choose from. So ticket in hand, I first built the Hogwarts Express at King's Cross Station, the flying car outside of St Pancras Station, the triple-decker bus on Lambeth Bridge, and the Grimmauld Place set at a pub on Claremont Square, the building's filming location. So in the films, these two houses magically slide apart to reveal a third house in the middle, and the Lego set does the exact same thing. This is seriously cool. Which brings us to a very important question. Does it come with a Lego frog? Yes, two actually. On the Hogwarts Express, there's a chocolate frog on the sweet trolley. And if you remove the middle level of Grimmauld Place, you'll find this guy chilling between the floorboards. But that's enough amphibian antics. It's now time for the minifigure round. First, I made William Shakespeare at the Globe Theatre. Sherlock Holmes at 221B Baker Street. Peter Pan at the Peter Pan statue. Cruella de Vil at Liberty. A London policeman alongside a real London policeman. The Team GB minifigures at the Olympic Stadium. And Sir Bramley Apple Munglesbyworth outside of Spronkington Hall. I might have made that last one up. There's also this minifigure in a top hat and Union Jack waistcoat. But I mean, it's not like anyone actually dresses like that, right? The day had been a manic zigzag all over London, and for just tiny snippets of footage. So as we now begin the transport round, I thought I deserved to sit down aboard a true London icon, a Routemaster bus. So here's my ticket. Oh, that's great. Thank you very much. Right, Perfect. jump Cheers. Thank you, sir. Cue the cheesy theme song. Building a bus on a bus on a bus on a bus. Building a bus on a bus on a bus on a bus. Yeah, the bus is very bumpy. The stickers are all wonky. But I can say I built a Lego bus on a bus. That was so much fun. Let's now do a taxi. Building a taxi in a taxi in a taxi. I'm kidding, there's no song for this one. And it's not even an official Lego set. Just someone's own design I bought the instructions to. 
And I guess that's all I've been doing this whole video, following instructions to build things I didn't come up with. So next I want to make something of my own, and since I'm pretty fond of Lego trains, the London Tube seemed the perfect choice. It took forever. Many weeks of hard work, trial and error, and countless online orders. But finally, it's complete. It's perfect. It's my masterpiece. It's everything I dreamed it would be and more. It's... beige? See, this is what happens when we just arbitrarily make things beige, Lego. Unadulterated chaos. This isn't a tube train, it's a monstrosity. One that makes me deeply uncomfortable to even look at. In fact, I have a moral obligation to destroy it with a very wimpy punch. I was totally wimpy on purpose, and not because I'm a wimp. Okay, so the real one... Granted it's a little clunky, and it looks really quite weird seeing the wheels given they're usually hidden below the platform. But still, I'm really happy with it. And if you remove this front part, the driver's a frog. Which brings us, at last, to the grand finale of the video. The one you've all been waiting for. A set so big it literally has the word big in its name. Big Ben. Not that one. Still not that one. And what do you mean I've already made this gag in multiple other videos and it wasn't even funny the first time? Okay, well the one I'm actually talking about is so big that I've booked a hotel room to build it overnight. I'm not entirely sure how good the view is going to be, um, but we have been upgraded to a suite, which is pretty cool. Here we go then, room number 523, the moment of truth. Oh wow. Wow. That view is incredible. So as the world went to sleep below, it's time for the biggest, benniest montage you'll ever see. This set is incredible, highly detailed, if unavoidably repetitive, but to build it here alongside the real Big Ben was just the most wonderful experience. The clock face itself is simply majestic, and although I forgot to demonstrate at the riverfront, there's a dial that when turned rotates the hands of the clock. All that said, there is a bigger Big Ben at the London Lego store. Wow, mine suddenly feels woefully inadequate. Anyway, it's time to head back to St Pancras Station, because I've got a train to catch and build. Next time on Half Asleep Chris.